Welcome to ChemDoodle Shorts. I'm Mary, your ChemDoodle Pro. Let's learn about the basics of thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography, or TLC, is a qualitative technique used to identify molecules, determine their purity, separate mixtures, and follow a reaction's progress. Often used in synthetic chemistry, it's a quick and simple method that requires only small amounts of compounds and a few pieces of equipment. Let's learn more about the basic procedures of TLC. In all chromatography techniques, there's a stationary phase. Specifically in TLC, the stationary phase is on the TLC plate, an inert sheet of glass, plastic, or metal with a thin layer of adsorbent. This thin coating, which is usually silica gel, is the stationary phase. Be careful not to touch the surface of the stationary phase, as the oils from your hands can interfere with the development of the samples. Simply handle the TLC plate with forceps, or by the edges. To prepare a TLC plate, draw a horizontal line about 1 cm from the bottom. Be sure to use a pencil. This will be the starting point of the samples. Then, draw small ticks along the horizontal line to mark the placement of each sample. Be sure to mark gently so that the stationary phase is not scratched off. Also, be mindful to only use a pencil, not a pen, as pen ink can elute with solvents and interfere with the development of the samples. With the TLC plate set up, use a small, thin capillary tube or spotter to apply the sample or analyte to the stationary phase. Simply place the end of the capillary tube in a solution of the sample. The solution will rise up the tube through capillary forces. Lightly and briefly touch the end of the capillary tube to a tick mark on the horizontal starting line on the TLC plate to deposit a small spot of the sample. Allow the solvent to evaporate and spot again to create a small concentrated spot, but be careful not to spot too much analyte, as this can cause tailing in the developed TLC plate. Avoid spotting too close to adjacent spots and to the edges of the TLC plate. With the sample spotted on the TLC plate, the TLC plate is ready to develop. First, set up a TLC developing tank filled with a small volume of solvent, about half a centimeter high, just enough to cover the bottom. The solvent level should not be higher than the horizontal starting line on the TLC plate, or the samples will wash away. The horizontal line should be higher than the solvent level. The solvent is a mobile phase and varies based on the experiment. A piece of filter paper can be placed in the TLC chamber too. It absorbs some of the solvent and lines the wall of the developing chamber, saturating the environment with the solvent system to minimize evaporation and improve separation. Once the environment in the TLC chamber is saturated, using forceps, lower the upright TLC plate into the chamber such that the bottom edge of the TLC plate is parallel to the solvent level and then cover the chamber to minimize evaporation. Avoid splashing the solvent on the TLC plate. The solvent, or eluent, will immediately travel up the TLC plate by capillary action, moving the samples along the stationary phase at different rates. Compounds travel at different rates due to differences in the interactions with the stationary phase and the mobile phase. As the mobile phase migrates up, the TLC plate will appear wet and a bit transparent. The wet moving edge of the solvent is called the solvent front. When the solvent front is about 1 cm from the top edge, using forceps, remove the TLC plate from the developing chamber. Don't allow the solvent front to travel to the top edge of the TLC plate or beyond. Immediately mark the solvent front with a pencil before it fades and allow the TLC plate to dry completely. Once the solvent has evaporated from the TLC plate, the spots can be visualized. Not all spots are colored, so a common technique for visualizing spots is with shortwave UV light at 254 nanometers. Under a UV lamp, the TLC plate fluoresces, while the samples are seen as dark spots. Circle and outline the spots with a pencil. Now the TLC plate can be analyzed. For each spot, measure the distance from the horizontal starting line to the middle of the spot. Also measure the distance from the horizontal starting line to the solvent front. These values are used to determine the retention factor, also known as the retardation factor, or RF value. The RF value for a spot is defined as the distance traveled by the spot, divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. It's a value between 0 and 1. 
reported as a decimal, and is unitless. Let's calculate the RF values for compounds A and B. In this TLC plate, the solvent front traveled 4 cm. For compound A, the distance from the horizontal origin to the middle of the spot is 1 cm. So the RF value for spot A is 1 divided by 4, which is equal to 0.25. For compound B, the distance from the horizontal starting line to the middle of the spot is 3 cm. So the RF value for spot B is 3 divided by 4, which is equal to 0.75. What do the positions and RF values of the spots mean? For compound A, the RF value is 0.25, which is smaller than 0.75 for spot B. It tells us that compound A did not travel as far along the silica gel, or stationary phase, moving at a slower rate. Its slower movement implies that compound A is more polar than compound B, interacting more with the polar silica gel than the solvent in the mobile phase. For compound B, the RF value is 0.75, which is larger than that of compound A's. It tells us that compound B migrated farther along the TLC plate, moving at a faster rate. Its faster movement implies that compound B is less polar than compound A, interacting more with the solvent system, or mobile phase. Now you've learned how to perform your own TLC experiment and analysis. Thanks for watching ChemDoodle Shorts.